Hi, in this video I'll show you how to group and number some customer records. And I got this uh, tip from a Mr. Excel article. And so if you ever wanted to check out some really good tips, check out the Mr. Excel's uh, web pages or the forums. Uh, that's going to be Bill Jellen, um, AKA, AKA Mr. Excel. So what I mean by num grouping or numbering customer records, let's say for example, we have uh, a table here that is basically customer record date, invoice number, uh, the name of the customer. We have some categories and items that they have. And I wanted to maybe number all of customer B and also maybe group them. So if you see here, we have a number here, which are eight records for customer B, right? So that's numbering each of the records. But we also have a grouping. Everything from customer B is assigned group number one. And then everything for customer K is assigned group number two. But there's also uh, 10 records here for customer K. So let's see how we can do this. I have uh, a sheet here. Let's add some extra rows. Uh, select this row and uh, right click, insert. Uh, let's do it a quick way. I use the keyboard sh shortcut Shift Control Plus. So I'm going to add a couple extra rows here. Let's name this one a number. I'll do the same as I did earlier. And this is going to use the if statement. I'll also show you another way using the count if statement. Let's do number and use count if. That's going to be a different formula or function that's going to use. And we'll have a third column here, that is, which is that grouping that I showed you earlier. Right. So let's start off with the number. If we want to create a number, a unique number that kind of counts up each of the customers, we would ha first have to sort this data. So I'm going to go to sort, create a sort A to Z, sort um, A to Z, and we have our sort of our customers. Let me hopefully I did this correct. Let me control Z to undo that. I'm going to bring up something better that gives me a little bit more uh, insight into how I'm sorting this. So I'll go under. The sort here is going to bring up a sort function. You can see that it's asking me which column am I sorting from. I want to sort by the name column. So I select that. My data has headers, so it's not going to sort the first row here. It's going to sort name A to Z. Click OK. And now I have my sort here. So my first function here is going to be an if statement. So I'm going to type equals if, uh, hit tab, just to open that parentheses. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if customer B here, or a cell I2 equals cell I1. If it does equal it, that means the, the value is true. I'm and I am going to add one to a cell. I'm gonna just add one to uh, the cell, A1. And if it's false, then I'm gonna start anew. So the first test is saying if I2 equals to I1, then I'm going to have 1 plus A1. Now, if that's false, I'm going to type the number 1. So in this case, let me press Enter. It's going to give me the number 1. If I take the fill handle here and drag it down a couple, we can see that it changes here. So in this instance, it's saying if I3 is equal to I2, which it is, then I'm going to have 1 plus A2. So 1 plus A2, 1 plus 1 is 2, so we have our 2 here. If it's different, then just start again with one. And you can see that happening. Let's let's drag this. I'll select that. Drag it down to where it gets the customer C here in row 10, right? So you can see here it changes, right? So this one is saying if I10 equals I9, then one plus A9, but that's false. So it's gonna start again at one. So that's why you see that one here. I'm gonna drag this fill handle down here all the way down to the last row to see what happens. And so you can see that as each record changes for customer name, it starts to count over again, right? So that's the way that's the way we can do the number. We're using the if function. And as I've done before, this one works, but first you need to sort by the customer name. Let's copy this as values. I'll go under copy and then paste it back as value. So we won't have the formulas in here and it won't mess anything up if we um, do any sorting, right? So these are all values here. They're aligned to that row. Now, if I wanted to use the 
let's press escape to get rid of that tune, that tip. If I want to use the count if func function, what this gives us is that we don't have to sort by the customer name. Let's go back and let's go back to the original setting for this table and sort it by invoice number. Go to data, go to sort, and I'm going to sort by invoice number. So we're going to have it back at is original format, right? We had the invoice numbers that we're sorting. With the count if function, you don't have to sort by customer name. I can just type count if, count if, press tab, and my range is going to be this, colon. I'm going to put the first instance of I2 as an absolute reference. Press the F4 key, and it's going to put a dollar sign in front of the I and the 2. Right? So I want to count if, I want to count that. And the criteria is G2. So what this particular function is saying is count from I2 to I2 and count if it matches I2. So in this instance, it's, it's only one cell. So it's saying count customer G if it equals customer G. And of course, if I press enter, it's going to be 1. If I scroll, if I bring the fill handle down here to copy it, let's say I copy it down to uh, row 9 here, right? It's going to count customer G here twice, right? Because now you can see that this function has changed. The dollar signs in front have made this static. But since I, when I copied the formula down, it incremented here. See, there's I3 here, but we have I2 over here. So what happens is when I copy the formula down, because this second instance did not have dollar signs in front of it, it, it incremented it. So what this one is saying now, from the range of I2, Let's, let's just click in here. You can see the, the things show up here. We have uh, from I2, the blue, the blue font color. We have I2 to I3. If that range includes uh, I3, then we're going to count it. So if, press X8. So it sees us twice, right? It's going to count it. It's going to put the number 2 there because it sees two customer Gs there. Now, when we get here to the new one here, of course, this is new because it's customer K. It's counting from I2 to I4, kind of counting from I2 to I4, right? And it's looking at I4. So how many instances of customer K show up in this range? Customer G, customer G, customer K. Well, it's only one, so that's why it counts one here. Let's go ahead and double click the full handle to copy the formula all the way down. And you see, it's gonna, it kind of looks like a mumbled mess but it's not. So now we can go over here and let's sort our customers and see if it matches up, if my numbers here match up to in column B to column A. I'm going to sort and I'm going to sort by customer name. Click OK. And now you'll notice that these match up, right? Because I have my customer B here and these match up to customer B. And there's the first to eight records for customer B. 1 to 8 records for customer C, and 1 to uh, 10 records for customer D, which matches here for the first instance. Now that's numbering my particular records for each customer. So for the grouping, I need to seed, seed the first cell here. After I have this sorted by customer name, I need to seed the first cell, and this is going to be the first group, which is 1. Now after that, I can implement the formula, and this is going to be an if statement. So I'll type if open tab to open parentheses. If this value equals that value, then I'll just have that value. If it's not, then I'm going to have one plus uh, the a value above, which is C2, right? Press enter, and you notice that stays the same, right? Because, of course, that value equals that value. It's just going to take the value above. So if I take this particular cell, drag the fill handle down here to the ninth column, ninth row here, you can see they're all the same because, of course, uh, this is all the same here. Be and this is stating that if I9 equals uh, I8, then we'll just take the value from C8, C8, which is 1. Otherwise, we're going to plus 1 to it. So if I drag this fill handle down here to the next cell here, which is going to be column customer C, it's going to change and it's going to increment it to 2 because what it's seeing is here, it's just saying if I10 equals I9, I10 equals I9, which is not true, it's going to add 1 plus C9. So 1 plus 1 is 2 here. 
So that's why it fills out to two. So if I double click the fill handle down here, it's going to drag that form, copy that formula all the way down. And you can see I have my groupings now, right? So that's kind of a nice for my groupings. What I can do here is I can type group dash number and I can create a, a further categorization using the concatenate. Concatenate and I'll take group and then I will put a string here. I'll put a hyphen. If we have some kind of string here, we have to include it in quotes. And I'll type hyphen, close quotes, comma, the next text. I can use one, either one of these, number if or number count. I'll just use the one that's closest. Press enter. And now I have my group dash number. Double click the fill handle to drag that down. So now I have kind of a nice group number scheme, right? So we have one group one, which is customer B, our record number one here, which is the first record, all the way down to the eighth record here for customer B. So I can do that kind of grouping here. And that's just using uh, different f formulas here, my count if or my if, and then an if statement for the grouping, right? So if I didn't want this to change later on, I can just do the what I did before with the copy function and then pasting as values. And then I have my values here that indicate my grouping. So that's a way that we can assign some grouping and numbering to some customer records. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.